can. You telling me that you're a sponsored Gymshark athlete and this is a freaking video you're doing real kind to me, who feel bad for me. Coach Greg and just wait for this. Imagine what's going to happen here. I'm watching this video by Linda Sun. The video is called, I halved my calories for a week. Very difficult and lots of tears. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. Counting calories ruined my life. Well, I'm going to watch the video. I'm going to see, did they actually ruin her life? And if counting calories ruin your life, why are you still counting them and eating half of them? I only knew a few things about myself growing up. My name was Linda Sun, I was Chinese, I loved food, I loved eating, I hated my body, and I was good with numbers. So she sounds like Coach Greg, she's really good with numbers, and I love to eat. The only difference is, I love my body. On the inside and the outside. I don't understand why so many of us feel that our bodies decides our happiness. It's what's on the inside that counts, but, but bear with me, let's watch and see what we can learn. The minute I woke up to the minute I fell asleep and all of the emotions in between were dictated by numbers. It's interesting for me because I am obsessed with numbers myself. Just as much as her, I would say, I love numbers. I just don't base my happiness on whether or not I achieve those numbers. Those numbers are information for me. Like when I step on the scale and I see the number, it helps me to know what's happening. I don't cry if I don't get the number I want. It's just a friggin' number. I'm so hungry, no. You aren't. You can wait. You've had enough calories for today. Just drink some water and distract yourself. If you weigh less, eat less, are less. It's better that way. And since when is less more? Less is not more. You don't need to weigh less to eat less to be happy. Happy is happy, and it's not based on a freaking number. And I can spend the rest of my life counting, and I will still never measure up to be enough because numbers aren't enough to define an entire person. Exactly. Numbers do not define you as a person. Yes, it's a quantitative measurement, but it does nothing to measure out your qualities. I always just want to see like what it does to my body, what it does to my mood. My hangriness. Guess what? You didn't actually have to do this experiment. You could have just watched Coach Greg telling you, you're going to be miserable. You try to lose weight too fast, like halving your calories. It's a starvation diet. You're going to lose muscle and you're going to feel like garbage. Ground's going to come for you, punch you in the face, make you hungrier than last time. It is not good. The relationship between my body, my mind, and my food. A relationship that I put so much time and effort into building up. How many times am I going to have to tell people we're not courting bananas? I don't date an apple. You talk to people, you date people, have relationships with people. Food, you eat it. Fuels the body, gives you energy, sustains life. It's not a relationship. Stop eating and drinking to help cope with emotions. Speak to your friends, that's what they're for. When you're having a bad day, it's not up to haagen dazs to make you feel better. Call your best friend. People. Start using your friends for what they're for, to talk, to have relationships with. So first mistake, she's not eating enough in the morning and she's saving her calories up for later in the day. Big mistake, people do this all the time. The less you eat, the hungrier you're going to get. You need to fuel your body. Fill it up with low calorie dense food so that you're full and you're not hungry. Okay, so I'm starving. I look terrible. I'm gonna work out and then eat our first meal. So she wakes up starving and rather than eat, no, I gotta go work out. Does that sound like fun? Is that making you happy? No, you should eat, get rid of the starvation and then work out. You think that working out while starving somehow makes the workout better? No, it might actually make it worse. You guys have seen the large amounts of peanut butter and pints of ice cream demolished. I am just not a happy Linda when you take those things away. A sad amount of peanut butter. And you just notice, notice how she puts the peanut butter on and she puts the amount she wants and she sees it's too much has to take it away. The secret is replacing these foods with lower calorie alternatives. Powdered peanut butter, half the calories, 85% of the fat removed. You can eat lower calorie alternatives so that you still get to eat the foods that you want and not overeat calories. We still want to be healthy, but we still need to eat the foods that we like. You can clearly see she's removing a lot of the foods. It's not going to be sustainable. 
You can't just take away all this food and expect to stick to the diet. You will not be happy. You're going to be hangry. My body realized I'm hungry and demolished five bowls of cereal and went to bed feeling like a failure. And let me just say, you should feel like a champion. No, you shouldn't feel like a failure nor a champion for binge eating having five bowls of cereal. You shouldn't get to the point where you're so hungry, so starving that you needed those five bowls in the first place. If you actually followed the proper diet, a good diet, a diet that you can follow for the rest of your life, you would not be having these wild binges. What is the answer? Low calorie dense foods, foods that taste amazing, that are filling. Like in my freaking cook book. How many times do I have to say it? Are none of these people watching Coach Greg? I don't get it. We need to stop the madness. Video after video, YouTuber after YouTuber. They're all saying the same thing. They don't like their diet. They're suffering. They're starving. They're hungry. They're binging. The cookbook is the answer. This entire video could have been, I tried Coach Greg's cookbook for a week and here's what happened. Success. But no, I starve myself for a week and I'll go complain about how hungry I am. Yeah, duh, no shit, freaking Sherlock. We know that. You can't just cut out half the calories and be satisfied with your diet. It does not work like that. If it worked like that, people would all be successful. They would just eat less and lose weight and keep it off. 95% of diets, they don't work. Why? Because you end up hungry, starving, and then you're eventually going to cave and binge. I will not give up the strength and energy in order to be under a limit. And most importantly, I will never give up real freaking peanut butter for that saucy liquid peanut butter powder ever again. <laughs> Gonna have to disagree with you. Powdered peanut butter when mixed with water tastes almost as good as the real thing. 80% is good and guess what? You get to eat twice as much of it. I'll never eat that powdered peanut butter because it's not the real peanut butter. Yeah, but look at this video you're making. I'm so hungry. Non-stop complaining. Oh, the giving up the calories and the counting and the life and the blah, blah. Oh, but I won't have powdered peanut butter. No, I'll just bitch and complain about my diet for my whole life because I'm focused on numbers. Coach Greg focused on numbers just as much as you. I know more numbers than you do. That's all I've ever done. I'm a numbers freak. I'm like freaking Rain Man. We're going to be here the entire morning with no, with no maple syrup right. and, 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 no, and no toothpicks. I'm definitely, definitely not right. going to have my, my, my pancakes. With, with, right. with, with, Ask anyone that knows me. I'm a number obsessed person. That is me. But I learned how to eat and have balance. Remember? Balance. B to the A to the freaking Lance. Balance. You do not have balance. Oh, I half my calories for a week to see what happens. Oh, I counted all the calories and I'm unhappy with my life and I hate life because uh, calories control and I miss it when I was this and miss being sick and I hate it and I'm hungry all the time. Learn to like the freaking powdered peanut butter. Learn to have balance. Learn to eat low calorie dead foods. Stop counting every freaking calorie. Just eat foods that you know are good. Foods that are lower in calories that still taste good. You know the ones that taste good. We all have different taste buds. Your taste buds are different than mine. Eat the foods that you like. Get my freaking cookbook. Tell me you won't find some foods that you like that you'll eat for the rest of your life. This does not have to be like this. This is too much. Can hardly watch this video. It's upsetting. There's too much negativity. You can eat and be a normal human being. You don't have to be obsessed over every single calorie that you're eating. It's about balance. This is one serving. This is nothing. Yeah, it was one serving. And with that almond milk, it was what? 160 calories in there maybe? Tell me that's enough. You think that's enough food. You don't have to eat just one serving. Just because it says one serving doesn't mean you can't have two. You think I only eat one French toast? I eat six French toast. Eat enough calories to have energy to feel good and start loving your body. Your self-worth does not come from how you look. It's from how you feel on the inside. Why are we all forgetting this? On a side note, a part of this week that made it a little bit more tolerable was that every morning I still had my daily yoga to look forward to. And shocker, she's exercising in gym shock apparel.
the number one company of unrealistic and unattainable physiques for 99% of the world. Wonder why she feels her body so inadequate when she stared at Gymshark athletes from morning till dusk. And it's just the perfect way to start off the day. The new Gymshark launch is now live and is filled with so many colorful and comfortable sports bras. And as always, you can shop through the link in my description. Did she just say Gymshark link in my description? Is this woman freaking sponsored by freaking Gymshark? You telling me that you're a sponsored Gymshark athlete and this is a freaking video you're doing? Will kind to me? Will feel bad for me? I can't believe you're sponsored by Gymshark and making this freaking video. How dare you? Oh, it's a number. Oh, feel bad for me. Gymshark. My description code, buy more Jim Shark. How freaking dare you? Can you believe this? I didn't know this woman was sponsored by Jim Shark. Ken. And reminded me how terrible counting calories was. This week, I couldn't listen to my body. I had to ignore my hunger and my cravings. At least I tried. You see, the more you say no to your body, the more your body is just gonna fight back. Let's try saying no to being sponsored by Gymshark and not having to live up to their unrealistic expectations. Ever think of that? If you didn't try to look like a Gymshark athlete and try to be yourself, maybe you would love your body and not be so worried and overconsumed with calories. Good morning, it's 7 o'clock. I'm to my exam. It's so early because I knew I wouldn't be as hungry. And this is who you look up to. This is who you're following. But no, Coach Greg, he's a meanie, screams and shouts. I don't like him. I don't like his information. Which influencer makes more sense? Her or Coach Greg, just because I tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear, I'm somehow the bad guy? You kidding me? Love your freaking body and say no to freaking Jim Shark. You can't handle it. Don't join it. I'm such a strong advocate for intuitive eating. You guys know that. Yet all she's done entire life is counted calories. Are you intuitively eating half your calories for a week? Call it out the BS and you're full of it. For me and my history around food and dieting and counting, being true to my body's signals and hunger is the healthiest way for me to live in peace with my body. Yeah, you're living in peace with your body, even though you just made an entire video explaining how you're not living in peace with your body, how you don't have balance. Does this woman sound like she has balance? Oh, Coach Greg, you don't have balance. You abuse PDs. Who sounds like they have more balance in their life? Me or this woman? Think about it. I felt guilty for being hungry, for failing every night when my body was literally just telling me it's under fueled, but I took it personally. Watch the entire video and during the video, critically analyze it. Think, think of it the way Coach Greg does. Does she have balance? Does she have control of food? Oh, why do you cut it so pretty? It was a personal Ooh. failure. Does she have it going on? Does she love her body? Does she know how to balance food with life? Or does Coach Greg? Which one of us makes more sense? I know we're all strong and powerful and amazing people, okay? You are amazing. You're fighting against your body. Your body will always win. Your no! Your body wants you to sit your ass on the house and eat chips. You can say, no body, I'm not sitting my ass. I'm going to get to the gym. I'm doing cardio. I'm going to eat healthier than last time. You can win. You can win the battle. Your body doesn't have to win. You can win. You control your body. Your body knows what it needs, but it has too much of what it's being deprived of. No matter how you try to outsmart it, your body is just smarter. Yeah, maybe your body's smarter than you because you haven't watched enough of Coach Greg's videos on how to beat your body. Step one, watch Coach Greg's videos. Step two, move your damn body doing something you love to do. Find the exercise you enjoy doing and do it for the rest of your life. And step three, get my freaking cookbook. It's that easy. And if you don't get my cookbook, watch my videos. I tell you what to eat. Just watch the freaking videos. Refer back to step one. I can eat 10 bowls of cereal, 20 bowls of cereal. 60,000 pancakes. So if somebody's so good at numbers, you're not really all that good, are you? 10 bowls of cereal, 20 bowls of oatmeal, 60,000 pancakes? Bet you can't even complete a 10,000 calorie eating challenge. 
Driving 5,000 calories from my cookbook. See if you can even do it in an entire day. Go keep you full. Eating delicious foods. So no, let's just give up on our body. I know, fat acceptance. Let's just be ourselves. Let's just eat everything we want in the pantry. Eat it all and love ourselves. Even if we're morbidly obese. Because our bodies aren't broken. No, it's made to be 400 pounds. Or can you decide to be better? To train harder than last time. To make changes. Not major changes. Small changes. Not eat half the calories that you're used to. Small changes. Changes you can sustain. To increase quantity and quality of life. Why is that such a bad thing? Why can't we try? Why can't we do more and be more? Trust your body to know what to do and that it will do what's best for you. Listen, you can't just trust your body in knowing what to do. Your heart rate beats on its own. You breathe on your own. You don't eat on your own. You decide what you put in your mouth. You do. And you can't just intuitively eat anything you want. Intuitively, our bodies want to eat and binge every time it sees food so that we can survive a famine. Our bodies aren't intuitively programmed to eat healthier than last time to consume fruits and vegetables. It sees sugar and it sees asparagus. It's eating the sugar. Our bodies don't intuitively know what to eat. When you're a baby, you put everything in your mouth. Whatever your hand grabs, it's in your mouth. So ask yourself, how's it working for Amberlynn Reed? She's intuitively eating. How's it working for her? She doing great? Should she just give her body what it wants? She wants a shit ton of junk food before bed. Should she be eating that? Is it healthy? Should you weigh over 500 pounds? So no, intuitively eating and giving it what it wants just because it's hungry is not always the right thing to do. And you can, in fact, outsmart the body. You can give it other foods, lower calorie dense foods that taste amazing. Drink water. Do the smart things you need to do to be healthier than last time. So in those moments, remind yourself that your body is intelligent and it will handle it. I swear I'm watching the reincarnation of Stephanie Buttermore. And just because it worked for Stephanie doesn't mean it's going to work for you. But it seriously ruined my entire week. It took away the enjoyability, the family dinners, my crunchy peanut butter. Of course it ruined your week. You're eating half the calories that you're supposed to. That doesn't mean counting calories is a bad thing. It means counting them and only eating half as many as you're supposed to is a bad thing. You see the difference? So if you're counting calories and feel like shit, count more of the calories. Eat more. Like why would I eat a plate of chicken breast and veggies instead of what my mom cooked? Because the numbers made it right, better, safer. Did I say to eat chicken, broccoli, and rice? No, I was saying to eat the foods that you enjoy. She's given counting calories a bad rep when you need to eat in a deficit to lose weight. If you already look amazing, and frankly, is she overweight? Is she obese? No. So how can she make a video and say, oh, all of you intuitively eat. Your body's too smart. You can't try to trick it. Try not fixing it. Acceptance for everybody. It's easy to say when you're already healthy. If you're not healthy, you need to do something about it. You need to make a change. If it's not working, it's not working. You need to make a change. If you keep doing the same thing, it's not going to make a change. You can't just assume your body knows what to do. You need to make the changes yourself. Next time on Coach Greg. I mean, I started off mad. I'm starting to feel sorry for her. Like, come on. This is sad. I'm calling it the way I see it. I can't hold back just because you cry a lot. Food can be your friend.